World Religion Day was established by the Baha'i community in the United States in 1950 to help foster interfaith dialogue and improve understanding among the world's religions. We have speakers from eight different faiths today, and uh, we're very happy about this. That's actually amazing. So this is where I want to remind everyone, remind ourselves, my, my, myself, that we actually live in a very critical and challenging time. At every corner of society, we can find challenges, issues, conflicts, wars, disagreement, quarrels, and, and so on. So, and of course, all of these things give rise to <clears throat> injustice, pre prejudices, hunger, famine, conflict, destitution, and this type. So, let us ask why unity and peace, and of course love, can influence our society in a way that can be effective and maybe change our society for the better. Now in answering all of these questions, I want to take you on a short, short, very short journey and where I hope to make it clear that in spite of all the desperations that we might face, we actually have the answer. We have the answer. Okay. All we have to do is to reach out, reach only within our hearts, very close to us, and look at what we cherish in our heart, polish those gems, share them, and put them into action. So at the very start, I want to share with you some of the concepts of the Baha'i faith. First and foremost, uh, that the Baha'i faith believes the religions of God have come from the same source of divinity, and that the teachings that they brought had the same power, not only to unite the region, the country around them, but the entire world. The reason that it took hundreds of the years for these religions to propagate through the world was not because of the lack of divine power invested in them, but because of the lack of resources, lack of communication, lack of proper transportation, the things we enjoy so much today. The second concept is that God has never abandoned his creation throughout time. Like a kind father, God has continued to educate man through his divine messengers who come from age to age to revitalize and uh, re-energize the human society. So it is so important to recognize that the divine cycle of education, which is in the coming of the prophets of God, is a systematic and a progressive system, very much like our academic and scientific system that are progressive and they are taught in progression and according to the capacity of, of the student, which is all taken in stages. Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, called this dynamics and this relationship as the progressive revelation of God, the progressive revelation of God. And in so doing, he also teaches the concept of religions, this concept that the religions of the world are not at odds at each other, but they are in perfect harmony. And they are part of a cycle of progressive revelation, bringing the divine teachings of God from time to time. I just want to remind ourselves what we face in today. <clears throat> we are surrounded with challenges, as I said. Lack of justice, equity and opportunities, lack of principles and moralities, lack of understanding and compassion, which leads to conflict and wars. And unfortunately, these conflicts are everywhere and in almost every sphere of life, and they are the source of all human suffering. And they are, <clears throat> and with 
This being the current state of affairs, we must wonder whether humanity has faced a darker hour in, in its history. Now, as hopeless and desperate this might feel to us, that we are perhaps unable or incapable of making a difference in such distressing times and in addressing these issues, to, to ask you to look deep in your thoughts and in your hearts, and behold that we already have the, the remedy to address these issues. Yes, we do. The remedy is none other than the divine remedy. The conviction of our faith, the faith in God, in his divine teaching that have come down through the ages and pronounced through his divine prophet. Indeed, the answer to our challenges does not lie in the man-made policies, ideologies, and politics. We know that from experience, but rather lies in the divine remedies enshrined in our much cherished uh, religions. And I ask you once again to witness equally important aspect that these religions of, our, of ours, which, from the, which form the divine progressive revelation of God, are all part of this school, of this divine school, this divine education. These religions, without exception, carry at their very core the same moral and spiritual values. In fact, if we look closely, we see that all religions, in general, has two aspects. One deals with the social and cultural issues of the time and therefore change accordingly from time to time. The other aspect is the universal and unchangeable essence or the spirit of the religion which deals with moral and spiritual issues. In other words, the spirit of all religions are one and the same and unchangeable throughout time. This is clearly reflected in the common moral values they all promote. Virtues such as brotherhood, love, justice, compassion, dignity, honor, truthfulness, honesty, and etc. These are all common in all, in all, all of our religions. So it is easy to conclude that as, as followers of different religions, we are all blessed and guided by the same divine values that are common to our religion. This, of course, is hardly surprising, as we know that all religions come from the same divine source and operate in the same divine school. As pupils, as pupils, <laughs> we, I ask you to look at it in that, in that fashion, as pupils registered at this divine school, it is not enough to be merely content by the membership at the school, as this alone does not bring prosperity nor salvation for ourselves and for our collective humanity. Rather, we must be inspired by spiritual teaching, and beyond all, we must put the precious teachings or values into action, or else they become meaningless. Once these common divine virtues become instilled in our lives and are put into action every day, it is then, it is, it is that that becomes heavenly and blessed by God. It is only then we become the signs of God on earth and a true heaven may be established on earth. So friends, it is that we have completed this short journey in the fashion that I was trying to convey to you the answer perhaps to the most pressing question today as to what can save humanity from its present plight we face today. Let me further illustrate at this point that the divine virtues are many. They are many and are all intertwined <coughs> in and related like a piece of fine tapestry. No doubt, the practice of these divine virtues, putting them into action, is the only means to guarantee man's prosperity and salvation, irrespective of what religion may follow, what religion we may follow. The virtues of unity and peace are cornerstone of the spiritual values as they lay the foundation of harmony and love 
of loving relationship between the religions and their followers. Unity, peace, and peace promote interfaith relationship, understanding, respect, and love. Baha'u'llah says, and I'm quoting from Baha'u'llah, the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith, the purpose of religion as revealed from the heaven of God's holy will is to establish unity and concord amongst the peoples of the world. Make it not the cause of dissension and strife. He further says that religion is verily the chief instrument for the establishment of order in the world and of tranquility amongst its people. Have no fear. All adversities will dis disappear. As we know, as we need to do this to live up to our faith and polish and bring out our, our human nobility that is still in every soul. So go out there, practice peace, work at unity, practice justice, be fair, be gracious, be, <clears throat> give unconditional love, be truthful, be honest, be compassionate, and merciful. Thank you. Thank you.